We're going to dig a bit deeper into the geometry symmetries, okay? Now, like you said, you already know some, okay? Um, you know about reflection. There's another reflect name for reflective symmetry. Does anyone know what it is? It starts with an L. It talks about when you reflect something, right? You generally have to reflect across a line, like this. You know, here you go. That's a line of symmetry, or the line, it has a special name, it's called an axis of symmetry, right? So, we often call this line symmetry. Okay, hopefully that's, that's a bit old from, you've, you've learned this before. Now, rotation, it has a similar name to line symmetry. Does anyone know what it is? Just like it. It's not line symmetry, though. Well, apart from rotational symmetry, like, oh, yeah, rotate. Uh, it's also often called point symmetry. Okay, because when you reflect, you reflect, you reflect across a line, right? But when you rotate, you don't rotate around a line, you rotate around a point, Is right? Like, um, Say that again? Like yeah, so in fact, um, this is often called, um, the, the process of doing a rotation is often also called a central inversion. That's that inverse language that you're talking about, okay? And I didn't even talk about, I mean, I could have. I didn't even talk about functional symmetry. You know, for instance, everyone gets that there's some kind of balance between something like, say, y equals x squared and y equals the square root of x, right? And we call those inverses. There's a functional symmetry there. Right? Anyway, sorry, that was just a side. Okay, now, these are interesting. These are really cool. Okay, uh, and you're going to need your rulers here. And in fact, you're going to need like a quite a good ruler, which has like centimeter markings on it and that kind of thing. Um, rotations are hard to do. They're quite hard to do. You need protractors and stuff like that. Okay, but you can actually do point symmetry without any angles whatsoever. Draw yourself a shape, any shape you like. I'm going to do something like. Um, here's a shape. Okay, you can draw yourself a shape, but for the sake of what we're about to illustrate, it'll help if it's not too complicated, and it'll also help if it's got some well-defined vertices on it, corners. Okay. A ruler, you'll definitely need a ruler for this. I'm only using straight lines because it's just going to be easier for me. Yeah. You need like a big space. Um, you probably need like the width of your page. It kind of depends on what you do in, in a second. Okay. All right, now, point symmetry, right? Just like I have line symmetry needs a line, point symmetry is going to need a point. So I'm going to pick a point, and I can put it anywhere I like. For this one, I'm going to put it. I'll put it here. That'll do. Okay. Now with your ruler, another color. Here we go. With your ruler, what I want you to do is I've got five points here. I've got a. I've just drawn up a pentagon. Okay. I'm going to take each of the five points. And I'm going to go to this central point and then go further the same distance. Example, okay? Um, I don't have a straight enough thing here, but I, oh, I've got a 30 centimeter almost do. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. So, here's my first point, and I'm going to put my ruler across here, okay? Now, for instance, suppose on your page, the distance from here to the point I'm reflecting across, suppose it was two centimeters, okay? So I want you to take that two centimeters and go another two centimeters over here. See that? So it's going to go across like this. Right? Now, you want to repeat this process for all of your other points. You're going to get something like, let's just try this out. This one's going to go down here. This one's going to go And last one. Okay. So, after reflecting, that's all I'm doing here. I'm reflecting across a point, right? Each one goes in that same distance, okay? What you get at the other end, if you rejoin everything, should be, well, it should be symmetrical, right? Now, here's what's interesting, right? We reflected, but this is not reflectional symmetry, right? It's not across a line. We didn't reflect across a line. We reflected across a point. Another way you could have done this is by spinning this around. It's actually rotational symmetry, but we didn't rotate anything. It's a bit funny. Okay. 
So we've got line symmetry, we've got point symmetry. Uh, I can't get away from um, discussing geometric symmetries without talking about helical symmetry. Now, has anyone heard of this kind of symmetry before? Anyone? Um, yeah. No, yeah, you think? Now, you should, you should kind of recognise it. Number one, because the word is, there's a familiar word hidden in here. And number two, because each and every one of you are actually carrying around helical symmetry with you everywhere you go. In fact, you're carrying hundreds and hundreds of kilometres of helical symmetry around. I wonder if that's enough of a clue. What do you think's the word underneath helical, that, where it comes from? Very close. It comes from the word helix. Helix. Right? So that's the word, it comes from the Greek word for um, twist or spin or spiral. Okay? So I suppose you could call it spiral symmetry. Okay? Yes? Of course, right? Your, um, your chromosomes are, now this is just one helix, okay? But your, your DNA is not a single helix, is it? It's a, it's a double helix, that's exactly right. So it's, uh, let's see. Uh, I can't draw it. You can go look up a picture. <laughs> okay. Well, I did them both the same way. That's why. Uh, yeah, hold on. I should twist from this direction, shouldn't I? Uh, that's better. It's just looking like a spiral mess now. Anyway, okay. So you're helical symmetry. Now, the reason why you haven't heard about this so much is because line symmetry and point symmetry are both on a plane and they're really easy to understand. So that's 2D. And that's 2D. But helical symmetry, it needs another dimension. It's 3D. Okay. Now, even though it's uh, 3D, you can make it easily enough with something 2D. So here's what I would do. You can take a plane, right? And if you cut it up properly, okay, and you introduce another dimension to it, a vertical one, then you get a shape with helical symmetry. It's very simple to make. 